All right, boys. Welcome back to another Full Send podcast. We got MPJ, Michael Porter Jr. on the pod today. Guy's an absolute beauty. You guys, if you don't know about prize picks, by now, I don't know where the hell you've been. You've probably been to Osama Bin Laden in the cave. Prize picks is by far the best app to fire on sports. There's no questions. I have tried them all. You guys know me, I've been firing on sports for a long time. What I like about prize picks is it's fun, it's easy to use, and it's a little spin on Instead of choosing teams, you're choosing individual players. So, if you know what players are gonna perform on what nights, this is the app for you. Each player has a set projection, and you either go more or less than that set projection. You put a minimum of two together, you can go three, you can go four, it's gonna boost your payout depending on how many you do, and bang, that's how it works. It's really, really fun, but you gotta be smart with sports, and you gotta know what players are gonna perform on what nights. We also got a code for you boys, code NELK. It's gonna get you a 100% deposit bonus for first time users. So if you've never tried the app, download it and use code NELK. And then if you put in a hundred bucks, you're gonna get that a hundred bucks matched with code NELK. So take advantage of that code, that's for you boys. NBA playoffs is on, we're watching sports every night. And we got NHL, go Leafs go, 34 is the go. Stay tuned to our IG stories too. Make sure you ride with us because we're posting picks. Gambles helps me with my picks a lot. We're the Prize Picks champs. We beat everyone else that's sponsored by Prize Picks. So if you're riding with someone, ride with us. Prize Picks, download it, use code NELK. I want that trophy, Prize Picks, too. Let's get in the pot. MPJ in the house. MPJ, off a big win last night. Huge win. Did uh did you guys do Coach Prime? Thursday. 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 So you're out here till Thursday? Yeah. Gotcha. How do you how do you guys know each other? We just met in LA. Dude, yeah, we literally met at a restaurant the other day because he had all these baddies sitting with him. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell the story actually. So Whoa, did he did he pay you to say this or some shit or what? No, I'll tell nah, you what happened, he did. bro. I was just, surprised. This is how we hit it off. I was after the sketch pod, me and Sketch went to the nice guy. Uh, and we had f- five like our most fire lineup we've ever had. <laughs> and Sketch saw him walk in and he goes, dude, that's Michael Porter Jr. And I was like, oh, shit. And you ca- you walked over to the table. You remember what you said to me and him? What did I say? You're like, are these chicks with you two? Yeah, I was like, are these, are these y'all's girls? And then, <laughs> I swear to God. And uh, Triv's ass was there and I was like, yo, we're... Uh, I low-key D'd you up. Wouldn't let you get to the table. Yeah, he tried he to, was, bro. He was protective over that one. I boxed you out. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even know who Sketch uh, was. Yeah. Like, cause I, I'm not big into the streaming world or anything. But um, bro, on my TikTok, like I just downloaded the TikTok probably a week ago. He's all that comes up on my TikTok. Yeah, he's everywhere. Yeah. So he that is was legit cool. Everywhere right now. But um, no, we ended up going out. You were with us the whole night. Yeah, we had a good night. We had a fun night. A little night. Uh, I got stuck with the bill. I don't know how that's possible. Did, at the uh, at the club. <laughs> at the floor room. I remember signing uh, the bill. I was like, how much does a make a year? Yeah, I would have definitely split it with you. Yeah? If, if, if I would have known, so sorry, bro. Who who made, who laid better uh, groundwork on Trevor's ass? Dude, I was playing defense the whole time. Couldn't get within two or three <laughs> <Talking> <laughs> on, I couldn't even talk to her, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but no, that was a fun time. Uh, how was the series, bro? Yeah, I mean, um, yesterday's game was obviously crazy. I didn't. I was looking for you. Where were you sitting at? Uh, on the floor with the away bench. Okay, yeah, nah. I mean, it's going good. The the Lakers are, are a great team. Um, they were up twenty yesterday. Uh, we came back second half, um, and then Jamal obviously hit the game winner. But that was a big win because going to LA tomorrow up two zero is a lot different than, than oh, yeah. tied up one one. So yeah, you had a big game too. I was gonna say I've never seen you play live. <clears throat> yeah, but you have what top three jumper you think in the NBA? Yeah, I would say. In my opinion, um, me, Steph, I still think Clay's up there. I knew he had a tough, a tough little end to the season, but his jumper is picture perfect. I think D Book, amazing shooter. Um, who else? Obviously, you got to put like KD. KD's in there, tough shot maker. Yeah. And it really, I think Jamal. You know the way he hits shots is yeah. impressive too. I feel like he was playing kind of slow. And it was kind of on you to step up. Uh, yeah, yesterday, Jamal, he – um, that's that's one thing that I respect in a player is, like, Jamal was missing shots all game. And then in the fourth quarter, you know, with five, six minutes left, he took over. 
and you know hit the game winner. So if you can like have a bad game all game and still kind of have the mental strength and the confidence to to keep shooting, yeah, that's like a sign of a of a great player. Yeah. How do you see the rest of the series playing out? Because you guys came back from twenty, right? Yeah, we came back from twenty. Um, that's yeah. definitely a heartbreaking loss for the Lakers. Um, but going to LA tomorrow, I mean, hopefully we can sweep them again. But like, they're a really good team. Um, yeah, it's 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 gonna be tough to sweep those guys. You know, LeBron, one of the best players ever. They got a lot of pride over there, and but we'll see how it goes. What, what's your thoughts on what LeBron said about the replay center? Did you see that on the podium? Yeah, I did see it. I'm not really on Instagram, but I think I saw it on like my ESPN app. Um, yeah, and he said that, that that it was a foul. I don't know because he's looking at it from their perspective. I definitely hit D'Lo like a little bit, but the ref said it was like marginal contact. But yeah, it is frustrating when when you know because you used to not be able to challenge calls mm -hmm. in the NBA. It was just like live time. The refs had to either get the call right or not. But um, now that they have the replay center, when a when a ref does miss a call after like watching it from every angle, that's frustrating. It, it was it may have been a foul, but it was it was it was barely any contact. I don't know. All the old players always say like. <clears throat> None of the new, none of the players now, none of the new guys like fear playing LeBron. Does it hit you different when you're actually like knowing you're going in to play him at the, at this point in his age? I, I don't think the word is is fear. Like I don't I don't fear playing anyone, but I think people still have like a healthy respect for that dude. You know because he is like the epitome of like greatness in in the game of basketball. But I think like. When you talk about LeBron maybe 10 years ago, who just the whole game, not even not even 10 years ago, five, six years ago, just the whole game just at you and didn't have to play in spurts. You know, right now I think he's kind of playing in spurts. He's trying to take over the game yeah. late fourth quarter, you know. But, like, five, six years ago when he could just do that all game, jump from the free throw line, uh, that probably was a little different. You know, I didn't yeah. really see him during that time. I mean, <clears throat> you guys match up so well against them. Jokic seemed like he was a little frustrated last night. AD – putting up I think AD had 34 yeah AD was hooping um early on in in Joker's career I used to think AD was like the perfect matchup for him AD always gave him a tough like a tough night defensively and offensively but uh Joker's continued to get better and better um probably gonna be the MVP again this year and you know no one really I feel like challenges him anymore at that center position you know Joel does a little bit AD is obviously uh, very talented, but he did get cooking last night. He had 32 in the first three quarters, and then uh, we switched. We put Aaron onto AD, and we put Joker onto Rui, and that kind of slowed AD down a little bit. What do you think about him not being a finalist for, like, defensive player of the year? Uh, let me think. Who, who's the finalist? Is it Rudy Gobert? I think it was AD's a, he's a presence for sure, but – I cannot believe you guys came back down 20, bro. Yeah, no. He was pissed was... after that shot in the post game interview too. Who? AD. Oh yeah, he they was. He was pissed. sick. They were pissed on the yeah, floor. Yeah, all the whole team of the Denver Nuggets like he was on like he was on your guys' bench. <laughs> I know, I trampled, know. He bro. he he contested the shot and then fell back onto yeah. the bench. And then we're all yeah. I know he was. I know he was mad. Yeah, well, he was hot. Are you guys Lakers fans or who, what are you guys? Just NBA fans. I'm Raptors. Raptors. I'm from Toronto. Oh really? Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, they're weak right now. I know they suck, bro. Yeah. Man. I mean, we had we had our time. That's it. That's probably gone. Yeah, when Kawhi went. Got y'all a championship. A lot of shit going on in the six right now. What else? The Drake's Drake's got the whole beef rap beef with everybody. And shit. Oh yeah. What do you guys? You been about following that? The rap. It's beef? crazy, bro. I've just like listened to the to the diss tracks. I know I listen to Drake's and I listen to Rick Ross. What do you think of push ups? I think it's fire. It's f hard. Yeah. It's, nah, so, that's fire. it's fire. so hard, bro. It's gonna be hard to beat Drake in like a rap beef. Like, I watched this video on YouTube too, where this guy like breaks down every line. It's really. That guy's so it's like deeper, deep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's personal like shit. He's, he's so he's deep. really like like a lyrical like putting stuff together. Crazy. I, I listened to Rick Ross's diss track back to him. Did Kendrick come out with one yet or no? Oh, Kendrick's been quiet, bro. What's good with J Cole taking his down? Am I allowed to? You know how everyone wants to like insert themselves in the beef that's not involved. That's because J Cole. I think he he kind of he's kind of above diss tracks to me. Like he's not petty like that. That's yeah. not even his brand. That's not his. Like who J. Cole is, I don't think. Drake, yeah. on the other hand, is a little petty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Drake yeah. wants that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Thanks for supporting him. 
What? The six needs you, bro. <laughs> You're second behind him. No, I mean, I hope Kendrick comes with some shit, but he's been quiet. Like, I didn't even know you guys were basketball fans, but overseas, um, like, those players, they learn a different style of basketball. So, in the NBA, it's very ISO heavy. You know, players grow up, and you know the day, the day and age we live in, uh, social media era. Like, kids are growing up with these mixtapes, and, you know, there's all these cameras in the gym, and they're trying to, like – show off their athleticism and all these things over there it's it's a very like team oriented game and mm. like very like fundamental so these guys that are coming from overseas they just have a different style of playing like joker luca you know like Giannis. um some of these overseas players like that's interesting just develop way different than we do over here and i think a lot of it has to do with kind of what the young generation values like Good basketball players in our younger generation, they value the social media. They're the, trying to just bang on TikTok and shit. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> I just think we just grow up different over here. Joker didn't That's come out with us that night. Huh? Joker went to bed after the Clippers game. Man, Joker game. be outside, though. Really? Yeah. like he, uh, he he likes to get loose a little bit sometimes. It, it depends on the day. Like, if you were to catch him in Miami, he's on you, the out, you, might, you might see Joker out. Yeah. What about his, like uh, – leadership is he like off the court is he kind of taking that role or does jamal Joker, step in there too he's, he's a he's a you know he's kind of a leader by example he doesn't do too much talking he will once in a while but uh he's more just man he's like when you look at joker a lot of people think oh he doesn't really care about basketball he just cares about his horses and things like that like that dude is following his routine to a t like anyone who achieves greatness in any area like there's a reason for it and joker he Every day is following his routine, getting his treatment in. After games, he's going upstairs and lifting. So he he probably is one of the most disciplined uh, people that I know. Um, so I would say he's more of a like a lead by example type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait. What What's your contract again? Remind us. My contract. Yeah. Like money wise. Yeah. I signed a max <laughs> contract. So uh, you're making thirty a year. A few years ago, I signed a max contract. Yeah, about thirty some a year. What's that feel like? Just. I Seriously, mean, I'm y'all actually got, curious. Y'all got money, man. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> how does this podcast do? Since we want to count podcasts. I don't know, how, Max how, Deal NBA. <laughs> is this like your guys' main source of income? There's a few. There's a few. Really? Yeah. What's the other ones? Steiny's well, still got like a just above entry level. He's trying to re- renegotiate Max I'm on, tonight. Yeah. So. That, you know when you get that rookie on their three-year for cheap, yeah. but they perform like that Max Deal player? That's where, where I'm at right now. <laughs> That's what y'all are on? Yeah. 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 He's looking um, for the max tonight. Yeah. Yeah, making <laughs> money, bro. It's a it's a it's obviously a cool thing to have some money. But I always tell people like that, like I'm no happier. Like I'm no happier because I have a lot of money than I was when I was than when I was broke. I mean, there's things you can do, experiences, but you still get used to those new experiences and it takes more to mm-hmm. like excite you or whatever. The best thing about having money is being able to like take care of the people around you, I would say. Yeah. But yeah, man, nah, I uh I forget how I came across your guys' podcast. But I was wondering how do you guys get these people that you get on your podcast? Who's the ones with the connections to get cuz I I think I watched the Donald Trump one. That was you guys, right? Yeah. It's a mix. Elon. It's kind of like a team effort. Really? Yeah. But like, like how, what's I mean, what's the process you. of reaching out to to these people? Honestly, it could happen just like Going out guys really? going on. Yeah, yeah, we've done that stuff like that. We're boys with Dana White because we do a lot of shit with the UFC. Okay. So he was the one that got us Trump. Really? Yeah. That was a that was a big interview, huh? Yeah, it was crazy. Because they tried to they pretty much tried to like shut Trump up, right? They did they well they deleted the pod we did with him. Oh, did they? Yeah. Like got, and you like, don't know who deleted it? YouTube. Just cause why? Just cause why do you think they tried to like completely shut Trump up like all together? Delete his Twitter, everything. Like, what happened to freedom of speech? I know. it's f-ed. And he, it's because in the interview, he's like, yo, they're going to delete this. They're not going to let this stay up. And I was like, no way. I didn't believe him. But then we they put it up. It got it. like 12 mil in 24 hours, and they deleted it. Oh, it had 12 million views in 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, it went like nuts. It Was that your biggest one, or was the Elon one? Elon's bigger? the biggest. But Trump could have been if it stayed up. You guys, um, can you put it up anywhere where it would stay up? Like, isn't there other places? I think we put it on, like, Twitter and like Rumble and shit like that, but YouTube's the Dang. best option. Honestly, yeah. it, it was dope. Honestly, because then he like it yeah. made a lot of noise. He it made him yeah. remember us. Yeah, because like then he went on Fox News and like shouted us out and like he'll really? shout us out every time we're there at like rallies and shit. Now that sucks though that they deleted it. It like, is. It's whack. Why? I don't understand that. Yeah. Are you, you think, think you think he'll win this year? I don't know. I don't follow politics. Yeah. Honestly, I I mean 
who like uh, is it gonna be him and Biden? Those it's are gonna be P- the final two. PR answer. You already paid, right? <laughs> who gives? A f- <laughs> no, that's one. That's one thing about me. People already know. I got my own podcast. I, I don't really have a a crazy filter. Like, I'll, if y'all really want to talk about stuff, like I would talk about it, and and share my opinions. But in terms of politics, I I think it's two sides of the same coin, bro. Like, yeah, I'm curious on that. What made you want to do a podcast? Like, I, you know, we live in this cancel culture these days, and it, like for us athletes or anyone who has like a like any type of following. You might put out an Instagram picture or like even like a Twitter, whatever it is, and and they'll take like, like if it doesn't agree with like the social norm or like the social like the like the what they're trying to push or whatever, they'll like cancel you or whatever. Or they'll take a clip from an interview or like a caption you put or a Twitter post and they'll just crucify you if it's not what follows like the social norm. So. That happened to me a couple of times in different situations. And then I was like, if I have my own podcast, I can talk about what I want to. And I can like, it can be an open, I think that open conversations, even if it's about delicate subjects or, you know, like, I think that's important. That's why I respect you guys, because yeah. you guys will get out here and ask questions that some people might think like, oh, they shouldn't ask that. Or the person on the podcast, they might get canceled if they answer that in an honest way. But, like, why can't people just talk openly about stuff? You know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of why I started the podcast. I'll have to get you guys on it, though. Let's yeah. do it. What's it called? Curious Mike. Curious Mike. All right. Yeah. We'll put it, like we'll put it in Lana the Rose description. On. Lana Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Is that your see, first That guest? one right there, that was an example of, like, an NBA player probably shouldn't have a porn star on their podcast, you know? But That's why it's unique, though. For me, like, I didn't want to be another athlete podcast where I'm just getting normal other athletes on and we talk about basketball all day. Yeah. Like, I wanted to get, like, I wanted to try to touch different areas of life. And I still, like, have a lot of ideas of different things I want to do on the podcast. But just touching different areas, having open conversations about whatever it may be and and let people talk about it how they will. Like I said, I've never been one to really worry about being canceled by whoever. Did you, know? you, uh, did you learn anything you'd want to share with us from Lana? <laughs> what did I learn from Lana, man? Well... Hmm. She's actually a very sweet girl. Uh, I would say, like, I think some of these girls that do the thing, but then they, they like, regret it. They turn into feminists, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. They it's turn a- into ultimate feminists, but, like, when I was watching it back, like, as much as I... Watching like, what back? Like, the Potter? Like, my, <laughs> like oh, I was oh. watching... <laughs> not her videos. I was watching the yeah. podcast back. Some girls do kind of get coerced into this or whatever but the only fans thing is weird to me because i understand why girls do it because they make bank like bro. only fans yes yeah. they make bread bro like to they, me, they make more money than they would ever make doing a regular job and all they got to do is have their management post pictures that they probably would post on instagram like and they're not like even the ones pictures. typing back to they're the not guys. even the ones talking to these dudes on only fans and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month that's the craziest of With, society though it is because now girls because bro if you're if you're thing, a sucker the, and you pay for that shit no honestly, but like, what i'm saying is the girls that are out there working hard and like we need to do those jobs then you have other chicks p- taking pictures making real bread yeah so now like more more people are gonna why would you want to have a real job if you get do up you on golf fence? at all or no Mm-mm. bro you know what i noticed cart girls used to be so hot on the golf course like every time you go to a golf that course, it was part. like the ball and job for for a girl was to be a cart girl. Yeah. And now I notice they're all dust because they all just do OnlyFans. I think now. <laughs> the other thing is I don't think that I all swear, these. That's my theory. Like a lot of these Only gr- OnlyFans girls, they're not even like. They're not even really like that in re- like in real life. They're not gonna. They're not super sexual. They're not like out I here know. being sluts. Yeah, I know. They you might know do OnlyFans, but they might not even be a. You know what I mean? You know what's funny about that is like an assumption I think every guy has is if you see like a star in person, you, ima- you automatically assume gonna, you can hit it. Like everyone's talking just, about, yeah. man, yeah, did you did you hit yeah. Lana after the interview? Da 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 da. I'm like, I don't even think Lana really gets around like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever take a OnlyFans girl <laughs> seriously? Like in a relationship. Man, I've gotten this question because I have <laughs> like not talked seriously to some OnlyFans girls, but I know some obviously, and I don't know that'd be tough for me, bro. Any It'll girl that's making any girl that's making marriage. money like selling pictures of herself, not for I don't think that'd be for me. Long they can't term. be doing feet pics. I don't think I could do it. Like for a marriage, because for a marriage, like 
Especially I don't think for marriage, yeah, bro, can't. because everyone's seen like that my sucks. girl. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah, I can do it, but I also don't want to be judgmental because I know I've, you know, done some things in my past. Yeah. But I don't really. But at the end of the day, like a girl, like if you would take care of her, she probably would quit OnlyFans and. Yeah, but it, but what about the past though? Like the past the to me of, like, matters, bro. There, like I talk there. to people about this. <laughs> to me, there's some things that girls do that's kind of unredeemable, bro. Like yeah. I forget what, 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 are, what are some of them. I think I was no redemption. I don't want to say unredeemable, but in my opinion, like I wouldn't wife a girl if she has too crazy of a past. Like, like for example, I, I think I saw a podcast. It was like Andrew Tate and um, Brittany Rayner. Oh yeah. Oh god. And she was like. She's you not. know, she obviously has a past. She's written a book about all the stuff she's done or whatever. And it's like she was asking why it was pretty much the conversation on that. Like, does the past matter? And for me, it's like, OK, but you're 30 some now. Now you want to relax. Now you want to chill out from all that stuff. But you should have chilled out when you were like 22, 23. You would you would have been a wife by now. Yeah. But now dudes have seen everything that you've done and it's been public. So it's going to be hard to forget that. But some dudes don't care. Like, there's someone out there for everyone, man. And if that's your cup of tea, that's your cup of tea. Yeah. Like, I know you don't care. Hmm? You <laughs> don't, don't care, care about that. a girl's past. I mean, so, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. What, marriage is different. Yeah, but a one night thing. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, when it comes to marriage, it's a little different. Are you good From the guy trying to like, steal my are chicks. Are you good at telling what chicks are, like, there for the wrong reasons and shit? I thought I was. But then, like... I think these girls are getting slicker and slicker, Dang. bro. Because they they have like some of these girls are really talented at tricking people. And they'll put off this image like they're like this wholesome good girl, but then you'll hear some wild stuff about them. Um and I see it from the other side too. Like I'm around people and things like that that like some of these girls that have boyfriends and have husbands or whatever, but they're still Partying and shit. Or, no, not even like partying, but they might be in your DMs or whatever, whatever it is. Like, But they come off like a good girl. So I see it from the other side, too. And I don't really trust these. I don't really trust these these girls like Damn. that. I don't even. It's going to take a lot. Dude, I don't it's even. hard. Yeah. Take no, a lot. I agree. Because they can also be so nice in person. And then you go to that Instagram and it's a whole different character. Yeah. Instagram is, has ruined it, too, bro. Why it's, aren't you on IG? I go on and off. Like, I'll get on. But, like, for me... Social media doesn't make my money. Like, yeah, I could make more money if I was super consistent. Yeah. But I make enough money playing basketball. And I, for for me, like, social media has a lot of cons. Mm -hmm. um, for sure. So the, I think the cons for me outweigh the pros. But for most people, it's probably the other way around. Are, are you on cons? any? Huh? What are the cons for you? That, um, I mean, I have thick skin and things like that. But when you're an athlete, bro, and you play 82 games, Every single night you're disappointing someone because mm, yeah. someone's betting on your under, someone's betting on your over. So every single day you're getting comments, you're getting DMs. Oh, that's yeah. That's one part of it, but I, that's not the part that really bothers me. It's um, <clears throat> I just think like overstimulation of your your like I, I don't even get on TikTok that much. I just think I don't know. There's a part of it of just being on social media things. It's a dopamine thing, like. Being on your screen, being on your phone all the time, I, I try to take a step back and and be more present. That's just me. Yeah. What yeah no, it's bad. It's bad for you. What are some, what are some other things that you do do off the court, just in free time? Bro, I, I you seem like you just bro. chill. I don't do too much. I uh, you know, I have seven brothers and sisters, so I'm always on the phone kicking it with them. Um, I'm a homebody for sure. Uh, I'll go to like dinner and stuff with a couple friends, but I don't do too much. I watch shows. I I read a little bit. Yeah, I'm watching Walking Dead right now. Um, but season? overall, I just season on? I'm on the last season. How? It was like 26. There's literally like 12 seasons, and it's oh, taken yeah. me years because yeah. it gets stagnant. That show gets stagnant, and then if you push through though, like it gets better. Okay. <laughs> I used to watch it, and then it was just like, <laughs> yeah, it gets kind of boring yeah. for a little bit. What do you guys do in your free time, bro? We're always on the road. We're always we on work, the work, bro. Really? Yeah. Just doing this. We this. got a bunch of different channels. Like, we got the Nelk channel that's more like a vlog, lifestyle, mm -hmm. like pranks. So, we were just shooting that for six days in a row. Okay. We were in Miami, then Nashville, then Cancun. Mm -hmm. And then we just had to fly here. Okay. Now, we got to do the pod. So, we're stacking three pods this week. What was Cancun? I saw it because I just followed We you did on the Snapchat. Bachelor video with Steiny. Oh, really? So, yeah, it was yeah, like... You should, you'll see it. That's one with all the girls? 
Yeah, I found uh, We shot. We got How do you even find these girls, bro? Same we way you do. Out. What do you mean? <laughs> we know the same girls. I know we that. We had 25 chicks. They flew into Miami. 25? We rented a mansion, and we sh- and we did like six days. We took them all to Nashville, then we took them to Cancun. So does anything ever go down with these girls? Or are they just props? It depends on the situation, but like I have to, the more and more I think Fine, about he did, it. He did find love, right? Yeah. Well, you got to watch the seat, but yeah, yeah, yeah. bro, like- I'm not going to say the name, but the Burnett that we both know. Yeah. That you've slid on, maybe. Like, if you're not slid if, on. if you're not good enough for her, like, that scares the shit out of me because I'm also DMing her, you know? Who's not good enough for her? Huh? You don't think I'm good enough for her? Well, no, that night, like, she had told me, like, oh, he had DM me, and that's when I had to play oh, some but D. We, this, but we chatted on DM. It wasn't like I just DM'd her and we didn't talk. We, yeah. like, talked. But, I mean, for you, is it just the easiest thing in the world? Nah, nah, nah. I mean, there's some girls that are... Girls don't really want to meet over DM. They want to meet in person. Nah, they don't. Yeah. You know, they don't want to. They get a million DMs, mm-hmm. you know. That's but, what I tell you. Yeah, I just fire them. You do? <laughs> yeah. My well, what do you say? Like, do brutal. you say something, like, funny or what's your, like, go-to? I'm going to die after this pot, but uh, usually just, like, what's good or yo. I, sometimes if I really want to put in effort. I feel like you would come off like a, like you would come off like a business <laughs> inquiry, but then use that <laughs> to, like, get at them. What's your go-to? I never DM chicks. I'm not even lying. Yeah, but you might find a girl who you think is like gorgeous, and you probably wouldn't meet her in real life. Like it'd be hard to run I into. I think you gotta wait. Really? My thing is, if you don't like to go out, and you also don't like to DM girls, then how do you even meet girls these days? Well, we like to go out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest. You gotta do one. I'm hanging out with y'all this summer though. Yeah. Wait, well, you guys mostly in Miami or LA? Uh, mostly Miami, but LA too. A little too. bit of both. Where do you spend the summers? Uh, back home in Missouri, middle of nowhere with my family, and then LA. Like, I split my time. Yeah, we'll pop out in LA. Let's talk yeah. about this guy. I feel like you're <laughs> slick with the females. <laughs> Me? What do you want to know? What's your go to? You used to be. You're like, like you, you have no wheels now. I mean, I'll find a lot of girls interesting. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, not sometimes, bro. Honestly, right now, when I do talk to a girl, um, they don't really got nothing to say. Like, <laughs> I just, some, I'm being serious, bro. So then I just get, I'm just like, should I try to say like, there's nothing interesting in conversations. Like, am I, and then I think to myself, like, (laughs) do I really want to put an effort and bang this girl and then have those shitty hours and then bang? It's just the same overall. Like, (laughs) yeah, but it's been years now since you think you're asking the right questions. I mean, it's every question is just stale. It's like, Oh, are you from this is that? So I try to switch it up. But then when I do switch it up, it's like, they don't got nothing to say. Like, not really. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a deep thoughted person. So I like asking like really just like deep questions and shit. Really? But like not in a like bad all, way. Off the, like off the jump? Not off the jump. But like I like to get into interesting things. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Rather not than be, just stale questions. So Not be surface level? Yeah. I but I mean, if I do find a girl attractive, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll put in work a little bit. And then <laughs> She got to be blonde, right? You got to put in work and then pull back. Right, yeah. but you gotta pull back more than you're putting in work. So it's it's like it's such a, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, pull and take. Yeah, yeah, it's pull and take. And then if it happens, it happens. Like I'm not a guy that's gonna be like, like wheeling like all like what's get, like trying to get like if you're not with it, bye. Yeah. You know, but if I really like you, then I will. You know what I mean? But it's a tricky dilemma. Chicks. It's a tricky dilemma these days. It is. It really is. It what, is because you can't trust them, right? Yeah, so that like, or why they're just that all out work? here. I saw a clip. The other day that I thought about it and I was like, yeah, that's true. You might find a good girl, but you would never know because she hangs out with a bunch of with a bunch of hoes, exactly. and they're all in the same group. So you they, you can't differentiate between the two because yeah, it's just hard. They to are find. who they hang around. Yeah, yeah facts. it's simple. It's very so on the women topic, what do you think about the women's basketball? Caitlin Clark, I saw got a Nike deal for like twenty M's. Dude, but she's she's cold though, bro. Like, what are your I, honest I, opinions on her? Because some people I never say, watched. Like her play until the tournament, yeah. And I was, and I was actually like in shock with how good she was. Yeah, me like, too. Like the way she moves, and then the 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 range she has, like she's like the female Steph Curry. Yeah. Let me not say female, because I said female on a podcast before, and all these girls kill me. These feminists. I guess it's women. She's one of the best women I've ever seen. They get mad at when you say yeah, and female. They got mad at me for saying that. female. They Why? said I don't know. The correct term this day is is woman. Huh. <laughs> 
Because probably, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, dude, but yeah. Women are starting to hate men, and it's probably because male is in female. You know what I mean? I thought female and woman was Isn't the same that, thing. I guess man's in woman. I don't know, bro. This shit's over my head. Can you believe that? They got mad at me for saying that's female. whack. That's whack. <laughs> Do you think she'd beat you in a three-point contest? <laughs> nah, but it'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be close. Yeah. What about Sabrina? That'd be that'd be close too. I mean, she she can shoot, bro. Did you watch the three-point contest? Mm-hmm. She didn't miss like her first fifteen shots fucked. or whatever. I thought she that was, was gonna pretty be crazy. Steph. I was gonna be mad too if she beat Steph. Bro, I didn't, I didn't want to do. It. <laughs> you you literally shoot the most contested shots I've ever. What's the nickname they call you? Never. Yeah, man. They say I don't swing the rock. <laughs> never swing the rock. Michael, never swing the rock. Porter Jr. But, I mean, there's literally a guy's arms in your head and you're switching. Yeah, but I'm 6'10", though. Like, I know. <laughs> so people think it might look like a bad shot, but I don't see that. I don't see that. When, when's the last time you've been blocked on a three-point shot? I think Derek White blocked my shot um, when we played Boston in Boston. But it was like he blocked it from behind. Like he like. Yeah. Uh, I was coming off the screen. I had it like right here, and he came from behind and blocked. But right in your face, then not. Yeah, that yeah. that's not you're happening. Just, you're confident in it. So that's why. you yeah. would agree. You just have the full green light. You can shoot the rock whenever. I just feel like I can make tough shots, yeah. so it doesn't feel like a bad shot to me. But yeah. I might look at it later on on camera and be like, "Oh, who, I see why they call me Michael Never Swing the Rock." <laughs> 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 who, are, who do you think are some of the better defenders you faced, or where you been <clears throat> have shut you down? Man, I don't like when those like. Not short dudes, but like the stockier guys at like six four, six five. They can just get up underneath you and like Lou Dort. He's a good defender. Um, there's a lot of good defenders. I think I never realized how good of a defender Rudy Gobert was until I played them this year. And like, what makes the Timberwolves so good is they have good on ball defenders with Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards. But then if you beat those guys, you just have Rudy right there. Like they're a tough team to beat. Yeah. Um, I think Phoenix and and Timberwolves are about to play in a little bit, so they whoop in uh, game one. Yeah, I think that'll be a good series. Anthony Edwards is a baller, huh? Yeah, he's a he's, yo like he's, too cold. He's like, really he's, he's really crazy, really good. bro. He's he's a crazy athlete, bro. Yeah, he's the best. Like he's athlete so in the NBA, explosive but. and athletic and strong, but then he also like has footwork. Like he's he's nice. Yeah, yeah. I think MJ just complimented him or something. Yeah, they say that's MJ's son. Surprise, yeah. Yeah, everyone yeah. thinks it's MJ's um son. Yeah, really? he's absolutely. Yeah. Are you watching I mean, like other games during the play- like when you're pl- in the playoffs? Are you watching like other playoff games? Yeah, yeah. I don't really want like in the regular season. Um, if I'm not playing, I don't watch a ton of games. But mm-hmm. in the playoffs, I'm locked in. I'm watching as many games as I can. Nice. You don't do too too much talking out there either. I notice you're pretty quiet. Yeah, I'll be chilling. <laughs> just don't want to get involved in that. No, I could. I just don't. I'm not worried about like I've never been a super big trash talker. Um. Yeah, I don't do too much. Too There's much no one that's at. ever upset at you, like on the court where you. Honestly, like, I'm about bro, to smack the Nuggets. Right now. I noticed the Nuggets. Uh, talk, the Lakers talk a lot, bro. The only guy that talks yeah. to the Nuggets is Aaron Gordon. And, on our team, yeah. Sometimes we we have a pretty uh kind of like even keeled team. We don't do too much talking. I, I wouldn't say. Yeah, what the Lakers are chirping a lot. You heard them chirping. I mean, I hate to say because I'm a diehard LeBron fan, but, like, bro, he says something after every possession to the ref or to somebody. Mm. Yeah. I, that, you can have your opinion on that. You don't have to say anything. But I was, like, surprised. I was like, bro, every possession, every every take, he's got to say something. To the ref? Yeah. Yeah, there's a few dudes that, that, that complain to the refs a lot in the league. All right, boys, sorry to interrupt the pod real quick, but got to let you guys know about Manscaped, all right? I don't advertise anything on the pod that I don't actually use, and I love Manscaped, all right? Everything they got on the website is designed to just keep you fresh from head to toe. They have so much different shit. It's a one-stop shop. You don't gotta go to a bunch of different websites. I love the razor so much. It's fire. I use it on my sack, and I use it on my face. Don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I do it anyway. It literally looks like Elon Musk made this razor. It looks like a Tesla razor. This thing's incredible. It's got all the different uh, trimmers too. You probably keep your bush pretty tamed, right? You don't let it get out of control, right? So, but if you did, like Gambles, it's got the ones for like the forest, or if you keep, you know, if you stay on top of it, it's got the different measurements. And then they got so many different shit, like they have ball deodorant. So, you know me, I've been dialed. I don't really wheel or get girls, but if I was to go to the gym and I got a call to get a kill, and you don't have time to shower, that's when you grab the ball deodorant, throw on the sack. You know, it's not as good as a shower, but it's great for emergencies. And then they got the crop soother too. Boys, you can't be shaving the top of the bush and then leaving the sack 
hairy too. That's just dust. So shave the balls and then after that, use the crop soother. Toss it on the little boys down there. They're gonna love you for it. You could probably toss it on your face too, honestly. That shit's fire. I do it. Just go like this. Everywhere. Lit. But we got a code for you boys. Code NELK on manscaped.com is gonna get you guys 20% off the entire website and free shipping. Boys, summer's coming up. Stay fresh, stay in shape. Manscaped.com, code NELK. 20% off the entire site and free shipping. I love that it's free shipping too. Thank you, Manscaped. I love Manscaped personally, so let's get back in the club. How do you think Brownie Jr. will do in the NBA? I didn't get to watch him in college, but it, he has the genetics to obviously develop into a good player. I think he's he's still probably a little a little raw. And then people forget he had that whole that whole Cardiac thing. Arrest. Yeah. Yeah. So he was coming back from that. I think um in the NBA, like, it's not always the most talented guys that, that make it. It's the guys who can like find a role. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, there's a ton of talented players that never make the NBA because they're ball dominant players. They need the ball in their hands to really like yeah. do well. But if you can like find a role on the team, play defense and knock down corner threes and and things like that, you can find a role. So I can kind of see Brownie um, doing that early on. Then he can, like, develop from there. Yeah. He's a great athlete, man. Yeah. Like, but that's, like, with LeBron. Right. Oh, he got so many people paid because they could do one thing, like, yeah. Shane Batty, I mean, look at, look at P.J. Tucker. Yeah, P.J. Exactly. Tucker's had an amazing career. And this dude, this dude, like, he's a, good defender, he's a great defender, and he shoots corner threes. Corner you know, he's, he's, and he's paid. Yeah, he's made a lot of money, and he's helped teams win championships because he's done those two things at a high level. Yeah. So. What, what do you think is different about, I mean, you're coming off a championship from last year. Anything feel, like, superiorly different this year in the postseason? I think, um, you know, we, we know we're, we're a good team. I think the difference is once you win, like, teams, they, uh, like, they kind of, like, know you're good. Like, you become the hunted instead of the hunter. Like, we were kind of like the underdog last year. We kind of could fly yeah. under the radar and just play good basketball. Now it's like every team is – preparing for us some teams are even like building building their teams around like trying to beat us or beat boston or whoever like the top teams are so it's a little bit different yeah but we should we should win a chip though this year that's the goal what do you think of joker's brother punching that guy did you see that video? bro that was crazy i just man. saw that this morning the guy ate it though <laughs> low he key did. Ate it. and have you seen joker's brother yes he's, he's huge humongous yeah humongous. why did he punch him he they said like um one of the fans was like, talk like a Lakers fan was like talking to him, whatever, chatting a little bit, and then Joker's brother like came over the, the bleachers and just like punched. Those dude. dudes don't play. They nah, might have said some like foul shit to him. Though, right? They probably did, yeah. Because people be saying like f up shit, but usually that you wouldn't not see like it. people coming at like those, that dude hit him hard, bro. Yeah, I'm a six ten dude. And he did kind of eat it, but they said he was like he was a little <laughs> drunk, so he might not have felt it. Probably made it easier. Yeah. You think the fans get too out of line with the players? Like, they have too much freedom to say whatever they want? Yeah, especially certain places, bro. Like, if you go to Utah, I don't know. Have you guys been to Utah before? Uh-uh. Like, all, those, all the Mormons? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, they're racist, dog. Yeah? Like, like uh, you'll look in the stands and you don't see one black person. It's all white people and they're definitely racist over there. There's a few, there's a few uh, arenas what, you go in. They're just yelling shit? But there's a few fan bases that get out of pocket. Philly... New York. Bronze talked about Boston too. Boston. Boston's really bad. Yeah, but I mean that's part of the game. I, but it's a good thing that like if a player gets disrespected too much, you can get a fan kicked out. Yeah, but sometimes players, rush. sometimes players like take advantage of that. I think, and if they get annoyed with the fan, they'll try mm -hmm. to get them kicked out. I think uh, in this series, the deciding factor. You know, I'll tell you right now. I don't know if coaches told you, but it's D'Angelo Russell. Would you agree with that? He's an X factor, but he played really good yesterday. But that's what I'm saying. If he plays good, you guys might lose a series. We're not gonna lose a series if he's on fire. If he plays good, they have a better chance at winning. He he's he's uh for them, you know, you know what you're gonna get out of out of LeBron. You know, most nights AD will uh he'll he'll bring it. Um, for them to win, like AD needs to like match Joker in production, and then LeBron's gonna do what LeBron does. You probably need like D'Lo. Or Austin Reeves to like really, really have a good game. Yeah. And then even 100%. then, even then, like it's 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 tough. I mean, they got a really good team, bro. Um, they they got a really good team. I think Jared Vanderbilt's coming back next next game. I think Christian Wood, he'll give them a little boost. 
But man, the Lakers, bro, they they hate us. They needed that win last night. I'm not gonna lie, I think like, that's gonna deplete them. To be honest, because that was us going us to awful. LA like up 2-0 is so much different oh, than going yeah. in there one one like, yeah. and then be feeling confident like that was a big win for us. Yes, that was my favorite win since being a Denver Nugget. That win yesterday. I think you guys could honestly, in my opinion, sweep them again based off that win last. Like that's depleting, bro. Like, like if we get game, game three, like, like if we that, go in there and get game especially three, especially going back home. After oh, that, it's, it's just like. like be like now we actually gotta win. So much you know pressure I mean? in like, your home yeah. fucking it's like, barn. Yeah. I just want to be a fly on the wall in, the, in their locker room and just Bro, see like how our, Bron- so our equipment manager, um, <laughs> you know, they go in there and like make sure they're. Good. Bro, he said that he went in there and they were so like just down after that game. I mean, who wouldn't be? You're up twenty, playoff game, yeah. and then you lose like that. But yeah. like he said, they were they were distraught. So, so your guys' equipment manager gets to go in there and like get a look. Like our ball boys and stuff like that. We'll go in there and like take care of them and then they'll come like, they don't like go and tell us what happened. They were just yeah. like, man, like they were, they were down after that, after that. L, <laughs> you know. Have you ever seen the parody videos? I think a Supreme Adams or something does them. Like Lebr- he's acts like LeBron after the loss. Oh yeah. And he goes crazy and he's oh, like, yeah. bro, he's I had 40 and you couldn't just hit one shot. Yeah, that dude is funny, bro. That <laughs> That's all you had to do. Funny. But I did notice that uh, Braun had that wide open three at the end of the game to win. Yeah, wide I mean, open. He missed it, but that stuff happens. He, he, uh, he was killing before. He had those two threes back to back. Then that and oh one, yeah, yeah. Then that dunk. Like he was going crazy in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, but missed shots happen. But there was just too much time. We got the ball. Coach didn't call timeout, and then Jamal came down, and you know he got busy. Yeah, AD was AD was sick after that. AD, yeah. I wonder how long LeBron's gonna be playing for, man. This is. Bro, I don't know what's wrong with that guy. I don't know how he's still so. Twenty what? Like, Twenty one years. He's like forty, league? bro, and moving like that, That's like wild. Carry, carrying an organization, like that dude is amazing. He really wants that fifth. Yeah. He really wants it. He wants yeah, it. at I least one one below MJ, I think. Yeah, the Lakers are thinking. good. They they probably need a little bit more. I, I wonder, like, if they were to lose first round. Like yeah, I don't what think they Bron's would, ever lost the first round. He I lost. wonder what they would do. Like, I wonder who they would try to move or who they would try to. <laughs> I saw Trey, Trey Young. Is the Trey, you know, that's like Lakers. one of my best friends. You know, we grew up playing AAU together. You and Trey Young? Yeah, like we won. Like, we were the number one team in the country. Uh, yeah, it was me and him. Team. and Yeah, we were crazy. But, uh, yeah, he, he – uh, I've heard his name going over there. That would be – he's really good. Yeah. Trey's really good. It's crazy now with these AAU kids uh, – how f- famous like Cooper Flag is everywhere. You know him. Yeah. And uh, Mikey Williams. Yeah. Like they're 15 years old and they're like actual celebrities making millions of dollars. Yeah, Mikey Williams. Yeah, makes million. He signed. He signed. A, I'm with Puma. He signed a Puma contract for some millions. And he's what 17? Yeah. And then the NIL stuff. That should change college. the game, bro. Because now you don't even have to be. That's the thing with social media, bro. Like in the in the era that we're going into you don't even have to be the best player Mm-mm. to make the money now now just because of your name and that you grew a big instagram a college is willing to pay you uh a bunch of money in nil because mm-hmm. it boosts their program even if you're not like the best player like it's just weird now it wasn't like that even when i was you know coming up you still didn't get paid in college you know it's you only had a lot of followers on instagram if you really were like the best players now it's like if you if you post some cool pictures and you, yeah, you know. What do you think about the dude on, what's his name on Duke? <clears throat> he did a TikTok, like a lot of TikToks. Jerry McCain. Yeah. You Jerry know what I'm talking McCain? about? Uh-uh. Did you see those? His TikTok Sweet? is big? Never seen it. I mean, no, but he would post like three or four a day and it's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you, yeah, and you kind of, like, personally, I lose respect for a little bit for those guys. You're supposed to be hooping. That's the thing. That's That's what I was saying about social media earlier. Like, if TikTok is your job or you're, like, an influencer and that's literally your job, like, okay, like, go crazy on TikTok or Instagram and make as much money as you can. But if you're an athlete and you're doing all that extra stuff, it definitely comes off as corny. Yeah. Or, like, bro, like, focus on hoop and go make your money playing basketball. Like, I, I know posting you, these TikToks. You do your podcast, like, more for fun and just to have a, a platform to speak your opinion. But did, like, any of your teammates have an opinion on you doing that? Nah, I mean, jo- Joker, I'm the only podcast he's ever done, you know, so that was cool. Um, they all like it. I'm, I'm going to get some more of my teammates on. Um, but they definitely like if I when they see people or they see, like, on Twitter, them trying to, like, cancel me or post my po- post a clip and, like, my teammates are clowning me in the locker room. What did you try sure. to get canceled for? Because I, uh, I said tranny. 
and I was supposed to say transsexual or tra- uh-huh. transgender, I think. Same thing with the female thing. Like I thought tranny meant transgender, and I thought female meant woman. <laughs> I guess, yeah. bro, you got to be like really careful with all this stuff. So, like, You're kind I, of up for that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Same train. Drop that like once a day, probably. I think that was in the it was in the Lana <laughs> episode. We were talking about something, and yeah, I said the word training, and I guess that's a slur these days. So. Is that tough with like being in the NBA? Like, do they, they try to come down like for saying something like that, or like? I mean, bro, like I said, like I thought this this was a freedom of speech country. People are so sensitive these days. Like, yeah. I'm not like trying to disrespect anyone, or <clears throat> I just and that's why I made the podcast it's called Curious Mike. Like, I don't know everything. Teach me, teach me. Like, sh- right. like, I didn't know that that was yeah. that was wrong. You know, I might get like a transgender person on there and be like, "Can you please teach me how to address you guys and, yeah. and things like that?" Like, I like, you know. So, you gotta but get my teammates, Jenner. if I do, if I do, if they see something like going viral on Twitter, they'll definitely like clown me on the locker room or you know <laughs> make jokes. You should get Caitlyn Jenner on. We had her on once. Did you? She's a dope tranny. <laughs> ah, she is she's my favorite tranny yeah your favorite sure. transgender woman favorite transgender woman yeah <laughs> she's dope uh, really we play golf, golf we play her. golf she's nasty but like the thing about that like, is like yeah, at golf what do you guys think about if you transition and then you want to go play like a male sport no that's bullshit. well if you want to play it'd be the other way male go to the females i think trump trump's yeah male right. transitions to a female but then wants to go uh play like woman's volleyball no but funny. then they're jumping to the sky and just like that's, spike. that's f- bullshit that's the dumbest shit I anyone do, that like I, I can't even believe that's an yeah, argument and yeah. i don't care about getting canceled for that if you agree with that you're a f- an idiot <laughs> yeah and i'll tell stupid. you and i'll tell you who is an idiot is the head coach of the woman's south carolina team because she said what did she, say? she said that it should be allowed no, she didn't. There's no Are you way sure? because that means if I transition to a woman right now, then I can go play in the in in the WNBA in, in average fifty. I'm almost positive. Someone should fact check me on that. But she said that. I after, would hope a a, a woman's college woman coach would would not say that. Yeah. If that happens, the women are done. Like. Yeah, I it's mean. Over. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that like there's be, no that's competition. That's like the biggest lack of respect for a woman is to allow like. I mean, luckily, I don't think a ton of male athletes would want to transition to a woman and play, but like, there's definitely going to be some. Yeah, like you imagine a whole. If you really want to win, if you do that, no, no, full team of a full team of transgender women, and they just go play, and they just are the best team in the history of sports. (laughs) (laughs) They should get them all on the same squad. I was right. Yeah. Yeah, So, so, so South Carolina, who they just won the championship. Yeah, yeah. It's the biggest year in women's sports. She said that should be allowed. She said it should be allowed when the women had the biggest year they've ever had. And you're gonna go and have that take. I don't I know think why. She I just they can compete with the men because of how good they were this year. Bro, the best woman to right. ever play could go in the NBA right now, and it would be over for her, bro. Like the the worst NBA player, like it could be a college, it could be a college basketball player, and they go to the WNBA and they average forty. Like I think Angel Reese could get one too. on you, huh? You think Angel Reese could score on you? <laughs> Come on, Caitlin, maybe, bro. Caitlin's cold. That's the one yeah. girl that I was like, okay, if she was in an one NBA time. game, yeah, on defense, she would get cooked. But <laughs> offensive, <laughs> offensively, like, she'll knock down some corner threes or, yeah. like, a swing, swing three. Like, she actually would – because she can shoot from that far, you know. Uh, but, no, most most women can't compete with men, and I don't think men should be able to transition and play with women. That's just – bro, that whole conversation just ir- – that, that irritates me. Yeah. Like, even the fact of – like I guess, have you guys heard of the furries? The furries thing. Yeah. Well, the, so the, the school I went to. Tails? So ba- so the hi- I didn't even know this was a thing until I went to Seattle my senior year of high school, and the high school I went to had the first transgender bathroom in high schools, like in the country. What did it say on the sign? It All was gender? just like the the mixed sign thing of like a man and a woman or whatever. Okay. Um, but like Seattle's kind of like more farther along with that type of stuff, mm-hmm. so. I learned about furries, and furries are basically these kids that go to school, but they think they're like a animal, like they think they're a raccoon or they think they're a cat. And they'll like the schools will like provide them like litter boxes and things like that. No. And like what the teachers have to. You're lying. Uh, no, this is a real thing. Litter furries. boxes, like litter boxes for these kids. But like literally, the teachers and stuff. I guess it's respectful to address them the way they want to be addressed. That's like if they're like, if they think they're like a raccoon, you have to address them like they're a raccoon. Like what's up, raccoon? Dude, what like the that? fuck? That's like, I don't know how to no. know. You have to like literally give them a litter box, and you have to treat them like they're they're a furry. That's like, fucking look, disgusting. One, where does the litter box go? <laughs> look into to furries, bro. That's like a real thing. 
I, I go just down? think it's weird that that whole conversation. Like I could get deep into nah, that. But I'm, my kid's not gonna be a furry. I'll promise you that. <laughs> if you send your kid to public school though these days, that's it could come. It could come scary, back and yeah. be like, Dad, I think I'm a. I think I'm a cat. <laughs> my kid's getting homeschooled, bro. I'm homeschooled yeah, my yeah. Kids. These that's days. what's. I mean, they're teaching it in school, right? Like, yeah. Like the, I don't know who's pushing this 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 agenda like this, but I mean, know, I remember like learning about like the Seattle sex super shit. super like that though. Seattle, yeah, like Washington as a state, and it's weird for me, like, because not everywhere in the country is like that. Like, I grew up in Missouri, and none of this stuff was like this. When right. I went to Seattle, I was like, yo, like this is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. So that's why it's weird for me. Like, I didn't grow up with any of this stuff going on. Yeah. I don't even know how we got here, bro. I don't even I don't know how no, we got dude, here. No, dude, I'll go down the craziest rabbit holes of random shit like that <laughs> on X and stuff. That's hilarious. Yeah. I got to look into that furry shit. I don't know if I believe that until look I see Look into it. it, bro. It's a real thing. What did you guys think of... Um, I'm, like, interviewing you guys now at the same no, time. Cool. What did you guys think of the Garcia Haney fight? Garcia's a legend, bro. Yeah. Well, you know, we had Did him. he see him? Did he come off as he was actually... I never thought he was, like, super crazy. When we did met him, off? I'm not going to lie... It seemed like he was playing an act a little bit. Like he seemed pretty fucking normal. But we went to a we had him on the pod, and then we went out to like a hockey game after, and like, yeah, he cranked a few beers. He was yeah. definitely he was drinking, drinking during camp. Yeah, but I, I don't yeah. think I think that happens more than people think. Um, yes, yeah, so people that. have a different way of preparing. Like just in the NBA, you got dudes who will go. I don't out think a lot of fighters game. are drinking during camp. He was loose for that fight. He was confident going to that fight. Like he knew he was going to beat Haney. That was incredible to watch, man. What, I mean, what did you think of it? Like, I kind of wanted Ryan to win because he just was talking it. so much that I wanted him to win so he can keep talking crazy and keep, like, like he's he's talking about a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm I'm glad he won so he can – like, if he would have lost, that would have been bad for the sport, first of all. Yeah. Because that would have been two losses in a row. And then – but now that he won, he can still be talking and doing his thing. So I'm kind of glad. they beat the Illuminati, right? Yeah. What do you think happens to Devin Haney after that, though? Oh, he's cheesed. That's going to be yeah. tough to come back from, right? Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. But I don't know. I, I'm not huge into boxing. I was talking to one of my friends who is, and he said Devin Haney was never really like that. Like, he beat a couple people. He's not like Tank. But he's not like Tank. Yeah. Or one of those guys. I hope that rematch happens. Tank what? Garcia. Yeah, but Tank is. I like how Garcia didn't make weight, too. But he didn't, he <laughs> didn't care like, about the like, belt. He's like, like, you, I have a three-pound advantage now. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care about the belt. Well, did you? Because in boxing, belts don't mean shit. No, there's everyone about, has a belt. There's a video of Haney and them celebrating. Have you seen it on X? Oh, really? Like there's a cake and like there's a girl being like, "Yeah, and still," oh. and he's just sitting there so awkwardly because he took the L. Yeah, but yeah, that what was, was five hundred five hundred k for each pound. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Hey, apparently Garcia also put two million on himself and won twelve million or won ten million. You can do that in boxing. You can bet but, on yourself. Yeah. See, you can't do that in the NBA. No. Wait, you can literally do that in boxing? Yeah, Mayweather. So you can bet time. on you can bet that you, you can put a bunch of money that you're gonna lose and then lose. You on can't purpose. lose. You can only bet on to win. Oh, really? You can bet on yourself to win. It's also individual sport. Oh, so then that's that's fine. I feel yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you could bet on yourself to lose, then there would be the some weird stuff going on. Do you watch UFC or or any other? <clears throat> nah, not really. Not too much. I don't watch. No, not too much. Just the NBA games. Who do you think's the scariest team besides you guys right now? Uh, I would say you got to say Boston, or or I'd say uh, in the West. In the West, I'd say Minnesota. It's like they built their team to try to like compete against us almost. How how do you like how do you look at that team? And I'm not taking anything away from them. And then look at like the Suns and the Clippers, and like they're not uh, ahead of the Timberwolves. I know. I would think that they would be the with best with the amount of talent on paper, right? Who? I would think Phoenix. that like Phoenix. the Suns and those teams that have KD, Book, and all of them, right, would be the best on paper. But you the guys NBA haven't. is different because it's like it's not about having the most talent. Like we've seen talented teams. You saw more. KD, James Harden, Kyrie over in Brooklyn. You saw like some of these got teams that just get a bunch of talent. That's not really how it works. It used to you be have that to way. have like cohesive, like cohesive guys that work well together. Like I think the Timberwolves. I mean, they do have three All Stars. You have Ant, you have Cat, yeah. and you have Rudy, who's been an All Star. But then, like, Jade McDaniels and, you know, Nas Reed. Like, this is a really, really, really good team. Phoenix, they're obviously really good. They have the talent to beat anyone. But you got a, you got a lot of guys who do 
like similar things. Like Bradley Beal, he was a leading scorer, but him and Book are both the same position. They all score. And you don't really have a point guard. Right. So they, they it's going to be a good series because they have, bro, Phoenix is so talented, bro. If they, if they start hitting shots, like they're tough to beat. They don't have that facilitator. Nah, like they had Chris Imagine Paul. Imagine putting Remember Joker with Paul? them. No offenses, but like. <laughs> Joker, yeah, Joker. But they need a point guard, I think. Because right now, Devin Booker's like their point guard, but he uh, that's wasting too much energy. He needs yeah. to be off the ball and can just focus on scoring. You yeah. remember you remember that era, though, of like big threes and then just like everyone teaming up together. And yeah, but even like then, Devin like big those team. big threes were different. Like Braun, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh. They complemented each other because yeah. they all did different things. Like LeBron kind of wanted to pass more and he wanted to get D-Way going. And, and you know, then you had Chris Bosh or like a – same thing with like Kevin Love when they had Kevin Love, mm-hmm. another big three. Who was another big three? Like Garnett, uh, Allen, and Pierce. Yeah, them. They're just, they yeah. complemented each other or like – who else? KD, um, Steph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, KD, Steph, and Clay and them. Like they all do different things. Then they have Draymond who all Draymond cared about was getting the, his scores – Open looks. The Suns don't really have a guy like that right now. Yeah, but they're true. still they're still a problem though. Yeah. What about the Clippers? I think Clippers are tough, bro. They're like, they're elite like, this year. James Harden, really bro. Deep. And people were hating on James bro, Harden. I think he's one of the best scorers of all time. But I, I'm sorry, but if the Clippers do get <clears> going, I don't see anybody beating them in a seven game series. That's just my. I'm sorry. You probably heard this a lot, but. Dude, they're who, who, deep, bro. <laughs> like, seriously. No, nah, no, nah, the Clippers are cold. Dude, but is, cold. is Kawhi healthy, though? I don't know. Um, I don't know what his injury is. Yeah. He is. They're nice. I mean, defensively, though, too. Like, that's <laughs> seeing them. Like, shit. Russ is a great defense. You know what I mean? No, nah, they're cold. I think, I think we got a good chance of going back to back. I feel like they're harder to beat. This may sound stupid. They'd be harder to beat than the Timberwolves. That, if, I think they'd be equally tough to beat. Yeah. The Timberwolves had the number one defense in the league, and then Ant is just a problem, like a crazy problem. Yeah, he's, he's on side. If the Clippers tough. have Kawhi, they're they're tough too. It's got, bro, this is like one of the best playoffs yeah. Like, yeah. I'm excited in recent it, history. I'm about to go watch these games after this. Who's playing right now? Who's I think it's Minnesota uh, Suns. And then later on it's um, That's dope. Mavs Clippers, who, I think. Who do you think you're closest <laughs> with on the team off the court? I'd say Aaron Gordon, uh, super chill dude. Y'all would love him. Uh, and then, like, some of the young dudes, like Peyton Watson, Julian Strawler. But I'm cool with all of them, man. Like, me and Joker have got cool over the years. Me and Jamal. I'm cool with, you know, KCP is one of the coolest dudes ever. But we just got a really dope team, to yeah. be honest. And when, when guys come to our team from other teams, they always say, like, the locker room's way different in our locker room than, than other teams. We got a, we got a cool team. What do you think about that? Just how everyone gets along well? Yeah, and just like personalities. That's the other thing about the NBA. You you wouldn't you wouldn't even believe how much personalities like in the locker room affect winning and affect chemistry. Like if you got some dudes who don't really rock with each other, bro, that directly correlates to how good your team is. For sure. Yeah. Are you good? <laughs> I'm faded. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are? What you smoke? Yeah. I haven't been in Colorado in a minute, bro. You got that? You got that gas on you, <laughs> dude. The altitude, hit, yeah, I do. But the altitude hits you like crazy. <laughs> nah, bro, you just been you just been wilding, bro. You need to get some sleep. Uh, well, <laughs> you this last all these six girls weeks on your insane, Snapchat, bro. dog. Huh? Yeah, yeah. The last six, sorry, the last six days were pretty crazy. Where's our girl at though, right now? Ours. Yeah. Egypt. What's she doing out there? She probably what do you met, think? She's probably she's, messing with some... It's a sponsored trip, dude. She's probably messing with some prince Egypt, or something. Yeah. Someone, like an Egyptian prince. She's in du- she's Dubai, Egypt, all over the place. <laughs> I saw her posting, like, at Chris Brown Vapes. Like, hashtag Chris Brown Vapes, so... That's funny, know. bro. Yeah, that's, that's who we got. That here. beef's going on, too. Did you see that? Chris Brown, Quavo? Oh, yeah, that's... that's Chris Brown talked crazy to Quavo. Why are they mad at each other? I no, bro, this is the thing. Like, Quavo's with Caruche. I think all these rappers be hitting each other's girls, so then they get <laughs> yeah. mad. Yeah. No, that is, <laughs> Isn't that what that's it is? That's got to be happening. <laughs> but, like, but they all that, that would make – I see why they're Do you mad, think though. all this beef, like, it's like even the Drake shit – They said Drake and Future, like, that's it's what it's over about, It's over a chick, right? right? Yeah. And that's how Drake, I, Drake mentioned John ja Moran. I know that's over a girl. Uh, I think it's literally all over girls. And – we were talking about this in the, the, in the weekend, locker room. I think he tried to get at his chick. Who? I think he tried to get at the weekend's chick a long time ago. This is the thing, bro. We were talking about this in the locker room because, like, 
there's a difference between getting at the same girl if your your boy doesn't really mess with the girl. She's just like another girl. But if if it's a girl that you know they your dated. guy really yeah. messed with at one point, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. To me, but some of my teammates were like, nah, bro, these girls are for the streets. Like, who cares? I'm like, nah, bro. But everyone also might just say that. But they really would You know care. when your boy asks you that, and you're like, bro, I don't even really like her. But deep down, like, they liked her the whole time. Yeah, I feel they like do. you know, though. But you know if your boy you liked her or not. You know if your boy really likes her. Yeah, you should it's know that. Yeah, well, there's got to be a set of boundaries somewhere. Yeah. Because it's getting out of hand. I literally think that's what all this beef is about. Wait, so who? Uh, Quavo dates? I think Quavo's with Chris Brown's ex, Karuche, right? Oh, so that's why he's mad? Yeah. He talked crazy but then though. Chris like Brown it, said he smashed Sweetie while he was while she was with. Wow, yeah. what the fuck is going on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing the thing is wow. like like you can't get on a diss track and say I, I want you to die. Like Chris Brown said, said some he said something well, he like said I they wish wished take off was him yeah, yeah. instead of yeah, take yeah like that's off. wild, that's crazy. bro. That's unnecessary, bro. Like I was listening to the diss track, I was like, okay, like he's it's a hard bar though. Yeah, he's going crazy. Like, but then he said, I was like, bro. Come on, dog. <laughs> was Quavo's track a good? Was it good? I haven't listened to that. I've I, been, thought, I thought it was kind of weak. I've been weak. listening really? to it. Yeah. I thought it was kind of weak. Chris Brown went in. And then, yeah, Chris Brown went in. Drake went in. Drake went in. With the TaylorMade freestyle, too, right? Who? Drake dropped the second one. Oh, did he? He put, like, the AI. Was it was AI it dope? Tupac and AI Snoop. Did oh, you hear that really? One? Bro, that AI thing is crazy that they can make. You can make a rap song. AI. Yeah, it's insane. Man, ask Elon, ask Elon like how we prepare for this. Mm-hmm. He's scared of it, he says. Really? He thinks it's a real thing. There's got to be I think there's going to be guys at the elites at the very top are going to know how to handle it and they're not going to share it with everybody. And then it's over they're for the rest know how of to us. They're going to control it for sure. <coughs> yeah. Well, I'm building a, a crib in a in an unknown location. I'll let y'all know, but I got a bunker. I'm Let's building bunker a, bun- down. Like we'll a bunker. We'll all add some sort of value to it. When yeah. do you think you'll have to use it? In my humble opinion, I think the world, it, it, it's wraps in the next 10 to 20 years. You think, yeah, I think I was going to say. 10. I Once think, AI gets I too, too advanced and then you can't tell the difference between reality and simulation or like, you know, the video games you can like go into. And all, like, I think all that stuff is in the next 10, 20 years. Look and how quick, that, look how quick phones like progress too, right? Like, could you even like picture? Okay, this is like an iPhone 15. Can you imagine like an iPhone 35? That doesn't even make. Or sense like right. the Apple Vision Pro V10. Probably be like a yeah. contact. Yeah, lens those things kind of like, fell off though, huh? But that's V1. That's like the first. Like, imagine the first smartphone compared to. Like, I don't even hear about this. Imagine the first phone compared wraps, to bro. like the phone now. I'd bunker down, trip his ass, two other chicks, and. Wouldn't give a bro, fuck, stop bro. saying her name, dog. We could bleep it, but <laughs> no, I sure love it, Amanda. <laughs> that option is out there, one hundred percent. I'm throwing it bunker down with Witter. Yeah, not a bad life. No, hell no. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I got the bunker going on. Apocalypse I, can't come. I, soon I might have enough. to fake something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apocalypse yeah, can't come. Soon <laughs> you stay focused when you go to LA. When you're about to go to LA for these two games. Yeah, locked you, in. You attempted bro. to leave that lot. Definitely keep hotel the, room. Definitely keep the IG off. We got the summer to go crazy. We'll be kicking it this summer some, but uh, yeah, in the playoffs, I'm locked. I'm not leaving the hotel. I mean, maybe to go get some food, but no. Nah. Can't let these girls drain you, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I suck the life out of you. Man, will they? <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what are you going to try and improve on? I mean, dude, you're. You're such an insane. So, would you say like your comparison to KD? Bro, I've had th- I've had three surgeries though. Like yeah, and we like, didn't talk about that, but I know you played. You had a short uh, season at Missouri because of that. Yeah, you know, growing up, I was like the number one player in the I world. I remember when I was growing up, and that you had all the hype, and it was crazy yeah, when you got hurt. Injuries is crazy, bro. But I mean, now like falling to the Nuggets and being in this situation and kind of adapting my game to play with these guys. It's an ideal situation, um, and I'm I'm gonna keep trying to get better. But injuries are, you know, they're tough, um, especially the ones I went through. So, uh, you know, I'm blessed to be able to still be able to hoop at the highest level against the best players in the world. Um, and luckily, I'm on this good team, and hopefully, in a month or two, we'll be talking about you know back to back champion. You know, that's the goal. So I can't complain at all, bro. They got to give Joker MVP. You think he'll get it? 
Nah. I think they'll give it to SGA. The reason I don't think he'll get it is because he doesn't even really want it, bro. Whenever the MVP conversation comes up, he's always like, yeah, I'm playing pretty good basketball, but there's a couple other guys that deserve it. <laughs> he doesn't care at all about that stuff, you know. You should watch the podcast with you that, we, that I did with him. He, yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's like a smart dude. His, like his outlook on life like is, is different, bro. I'll say it seems like there's not much ego in the locker room. No. Nah. Everyone's there for each other. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely not in the Lakers. Yeah, but that's part partly because of like the type it's, of guys that the, that's why they do like before you get drafted they do interviews like they'll interview you know the players and and that's a big part of it. You wouldn't think that you would walk into an, a room with like all the presidents and the GMs of these teams and that would mean that much. But they care a lot about like your personality because they want to like mix personalities. Yeah, that's actually interesting. I don't think I've ever heard any one talk about that what what's that process like yeah like when you're a young dude going to like rookie the rookie uh the combine and things like that like all the teams will be there and then the teams that are looking at you you'll have like interviews with them and you'll go and like sit down and talk to the front office guys and like I didn't really realize how um like how important that was to these teams but then I heard like you know Tyrese Halliburton he got drafted pretty much it was a lot of it was because of his talent, but like I heard, like he had like one of the best interviews ever, and so they really liked him as a person and like how he could fit their team. And you know, then he went to Sacramento and they loved him, and you know, he he turned out to be an amazing player. So um, they care a lot about personalities because like you got some talented players who just yeah it just it doesn't work. You know, they might have too much of an ego. They might not have the work ethic. They might um, think they're better than they are. Uh, they might not be willing to accept a role for, like, the greater good of the team because they've yeah. always been the man. You got to think, every NBA player at one point in their life was, like, the man. Mm-hmm. And now you're in a league of all these alpha dudes who think they're the man. But maybe, like, lowering your ego and playing a role will help you make millions of dollars. Yeah. Some players can't do that. Yeah, no. I always You can just watch sometimes and tell and be like, if you're playing at this level and it's this competitive, but there are guys out there that just don't give a Yeah. Even about basketball. Yeah. And it's just so crazy to think, like, just being that athletic and having that much talent, you don't care to win. Yeah. You can never figure that out. Yeah, man. I mean, some dudes, like, their passion for the game kind of diminishes. The NBA is hard, bro. It's 82 games. Some dudes want the long summer. Yeah. You know, they – like, if you, if you didn't make the playoffs, you got to be done last week, and you get to have the whole summer to go – chill and do whatever you want uh but for you know the the good teams you're playing another couple months the summer's short bro like our summer was short last year like you know it was and then right back into the season like we're tired you know what i mean yeah especially when you win too there's probably a lot when you win it's a lot of stuff going on bro i went to taiwan shortly after we won bro and like the love you get after winning a championship like it's crazy like How was lot. Taiwan? It was dope, bro. Like, they were waiting for me in the airport. Like, I landed, and the whole airport was filled with people. I was like, I didn't even know I had that many fans How'd over there. How'd they know you were – was it all you guys, or you just went? No, it was just me. I was going out coming? there for, like, a couple – like, an appearance. Like, I had one dude set up, like, a little appearance for, like, some money. So, I went out there, and, like, a bunch of Taiwan people were in Damn. the airport, like, waiting on me. It was crazy. And, and they all watched the championship, like – it's crazy. It really is. Like the NBA is like a worldwide sport, yeah, and then when yeah. you win, it gets even crazier. IGs That's go good. up, huh? Huh? The IG number goes up like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I sh- wow. Like if I, I, I've deleted my Instagram so many times. If I would have kept it up, I mean that probably would have been good for my brand. But bro, yeah. stay out of the comments. You don't need to read no negative shit. Yeah, definitely. I don't. could see one getting to you, and then you like pacing around the, pacing around your penthouse, <laughs> thinking about it. When people say Headphones they don't on. care about people's opinion, like I'm sure when you guys release a podcast and people are just talking crazy yeah, about you guys, like it sucks. That's not cool not to anyone. Sucks. Like people act like if you have money or you have a whatever, like you're a robot. But you're just, still human. You're still, still a human. You're still a human, bro. Yeah. yeah. How weird was it not seeing the Warriors in the playoffs? It's been a long Man, time. it's sad. But like, it's just sad seeing kind of like the end of an era. It seems like. And then Clay, like looking at the court, like that was like sad. I don't know but what's going on? Yeah, that was sad. But I mean, Steph is still Steph. I mean, 
who knows what they'll do. I'll be interested to see what they do next year. But when you ever see, like, an end of an era like that, like, that's it's, what we grew sad. up on. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty damn sad. All right. Dude. This is fire. Yeah. Nah, Yo, this was dope, man. Yeah, this we, is dope. We touched some good topics. Definitely some cancel-worthy topics. Yeah. <laughs> cancel us on Twitter. We'll be waiting, right? <laughs> man, I appreciate you guys having yeah, me no, on. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Right. Right. Thanks for coming the podcast. On. Championship. We'll pull up to the party. And yeah. Then let's do it for sure. Appreciate right. you guys. Wait, appreciate what's your pod called again? Curious Mike. Yeah, go check it out. Check uh, it out. Pod y'all got to get on there. there. Let's Next do time it. we're in the same city, let's I'm going to interview you guys for Down. sure. Let's do it. All right, bro. Thank you so much. Let's go. You already know. Let's go.